This is lesson 4.1, classifying triangles. Your objectives are to identify and classify triangles by angle measures and by side measures. If all three angles of a triangle are acute, then it's an acute triangle. If all three angles are congruent, then it's equiangular. If one angle is obtuse, then it's an obtuse triangle. And if one angle is right, then it's a right angle. Remember also that equiangular triangles are always acute. Classify each triangle as acute, equiangular, obtuse, or right. For number one, look at the angle measures. This one has a right angle, so it's a right triangle. Right triangles have one right angle. Look at number two. Number two has one obtuse angle. And so it's an obtuse triangle. If it has one obtuse angle, it's an obtuse triangle. For number three, since all angles are the same, it's equiangular. And since all angles are acute, it's also acute. Remember, equiangular triangles are always acute. For number four, look at the angle measures. All angles are acute, so it's an acute triangle. Number five, this one has a right angle, so it's a right triangle. Look at the angles on number six. Number six has an obtuse angle, so it's an obtuse triangle. Remember, if all angles are acute, then it's acute. If all angles are congruent, then it's equiangular and acute, and that congruent measure is going to be 60 degrees. If it has one obtuse angle, it's an obtuse triangle, and if it has one right angle, then it's a right triangle. You can also classify triangles by side lengths. If all three sides are congruent, then it's an equilateral triangle. If at least two sides are congruent, then it's isosceles. So equilateral triangles are also isosceles since they do have at least two sides congruent. And if all sides are different, then it's scaling. Classify each triangle as equilateral isosceles or scaling. Number one, look at the side lengths. They're all different, and when they're all different, it's a scaling triangle. Number two, all sides are the same length, so it's equilateral. And remember, equilateral triangles are also isosceles because at least two sides are congruent. Number three, all sides are different, so it's a scaling triangle. Number four, this one has two congruent sides, so it's isosceles. Number five also has two congruent sides, the 32x and the 32x. Even though we don't know what x is, we do know that those values are the same. This one is isosceles. Number six, all sides are congruent, so it's equilateral. And since at least two sides are congruent, it's also isosceles. Remember, equilateral triangles are always isosceles. Scaling triangles have all sides of different lengths. Isosceles triangles have at least two sides congruent, 
and equilateral triangles have all three sides congruent. Number 7. Find x and the length of each side if triangle RST is an equilateral triangle. Well, if it's equilateral, then all sides are congruent. So we can pick any two sides and make them equal each other. Like 2x plus 2 equals 3x. Any two sides, you can make their measures equal each other. I have an equation. Let's solve for x. Subtract 2x from each side to get the x's all on one side. That gives you 2 equals x. So x is 2. That's the first answer. Then it says find the length of each side. Well, let's substitute that 2 in for each side length. For rs, which is 2x plus 2, it's really 2 times 2 plus 2, which is 6. For segment ST, it's 3x, and x is 2, so it's 3 times 2, which is 6. And for segment RT, 5 times x minus 4 is really 5 times 2 minus 4, which is also 6. And they should all be the same thing because it's equilateral. It's a good way to check your work. If you substitute it in and it turned out they were all different, then you knew you made a mistake. Since all sides are equilateral, pick any two, make their measures equal, and there's your equation. Number 8. Find x and the length of each side if triangle ABC is isosceles with the measure of segment AB equal to the measure of segment BC. So we know that AB and BC are the same. Those are the two congruent sides in the isosceles triangle. Since those are congruent, make their measures equal. 4y equals 3y plus 2. And we'll solve for y. Subtract 3y from each side. You get y equals 2. That's your first answer. And then substitute 2 in for the y's in each of the side lengths. AB is 4y, which is 4 times 2, which is 8. AC is 3y, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. And BC is 3y plus 2, which is 3 times 2 plus 2, which is 8. AB and BC are both 8. They should be the same thing because it said that those were the two sides that had equal lengths. So you've done it. So remember, if a triangle has all acute angles, it's acute. If there's one obtuse angle, it's obtuse. One right angle makes it a right triangle. And if all angles are the same, it's equiangular. For sides, if all sides are different, it's scaling. If at least two sides are the same, it's isosceles. And if all sides are the same, it's equilateral. Now, one thing to remember, an equilateral triangle is always equiangular, which is always acute, which is always isosceles. So if it's equilateral, it has all four of those classifications. Equilateral, equiangular, acute, and isosceles. This is Lesson 4.2, Angles of Triangles. Your objectives are to apply the Triangle Angle Sum Theorem and to apply the Exterior Angle Theorem. The Triangle Angle Sum Theorem simply says that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if you know two angles of a triangle, subtract those from 180 to get the third angle. Find the measures of each numbered angle. For number one, you have a triangle where you know two of the angle measures and we need to find the measure of angle one. Well, use the triangle angle sum theorem that says that the three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. Solve this equation. 62 plus 90 is 152. And when you subtract 152 from both sides, the measure of angle 1 is 28. 
The three angles of a triangle add up to 180. Number four. Let's find the measures of angles one, two, and three. On the left-hand triangle, we know two angle measures. On the right-hand triangle, we only know one. So let's start with the left-hand triangle because if you know two angles, you can easily find the third angle. So those three angles add up to 180. 66 plus 58 is 124. Subtract 124 from both sides. And the measure of angle 1 is 56. The three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. Now let's see if we can move into the right-hand triangle. Angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles, so they have the same measure, so angle 2 is also 56 degrees. And now on the right-hand triangle, you know two of the angles. Add them up to 180 to get the third angle. Measure of angle 3 plus 50 plus 56 equals 180. And solve that. 50 plus 56 is 106. And subtract 106 from each side to get 74. So just remember, the three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. And any time you have vertical angles, that rule is still the same. Vertical angles are congruent. Number five. Here we have two triangles next to one another. On the left, I know one angle measure, and on the right, I know two angle measures. Now look at angle RWS. It's a right angle. And because of the linear pair formed at the bottom, I know that angle RWT is also a right angle, because 90 plus 90 is 180. Now let's find the measure of angle 1. I know 90 and 60. Let's find out what the measure of angle 1 is, because those will add up to equal 180. So the measure of angle 1 plus 60 plus 90 equals 180. The three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. 60 plus 90 is 150. Subtract 150 from each side. And the measure of angle 1 is 30. Now for the measure of angle 2. You know two angles. Use the third triangle angle sum theorem to find the third angle. Measure of angle 2 plus 90 plus 30 equals 180. 90 plus 30 is 120. And subtract 120 from each side. Measure of angle 2 is 60. So the triangle angle sum theorem says that the three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. The exterior angle theorem says that the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. Now if you look at the picture in this box, angle 1 is an exterior angle. You extend a side, and the angle outside the triangle is the exterior angle. The two remote interior angles are the two angles of the triangle on the other side of the triangle. It's not the one adjacent to the exterior angle, it's the other two. The exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. Find the measures of each numbered angle. Number one. In this picture, angle one is an exterior angle because you extend a side and then the angle formed out there is the exterior angle. The 50 degree angle and the 65 degree angle are remote interior angles. They're not adjacent to angle one. They're the other two angles. And the rule says that the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. So let's do that. Measure of angle 1 is the sum of 50 and 65. When you add those together, you get 115. The exterior angle theorem says that the exterior angle equals the sum of the remote interior angles.
for number four. In this picture, sometimes it's a little bit confusing where you can start. Just do your best to focus on each triangle and see if any of the triangles give you enough information. In the middle triangle, we know two angles, 35 degrees and 36 degrees. And I know that the three angles add up to 180, so let's do that to find the measure of angle 1. Measure of angle 1 plus 35 plus 36 equals 180. Solve for the measure of angle 1. 35 plus 36 is 71. And when you subtract 71 from each side, the measure of angle 1 is 109 degrees. Now, the left-hand triangle and the right-hand triangle don't really have enough information. But, look at that straight line right there. The measure of angle 1 and the one above to the left of it make a linear pair. So those add up to 180. 109 plus 71 make 180. And that gives me two angles in the left-hand triangle. And since I know that all three of those angles add up to 180, I can make my equation now. The measure of angle 2 plus 80 plus 71 equals 180, and that's for the left-hand triangle. Solve for the measure of angle 2. 80 plus 71 is 151. And if you subtract 151 from both sides, the measure of angle 2 is 29. Now for the measure of angle 3. There are different ways to find the measure of angle 3, but we can use the exterior angle theorem. If you extend that side of the bottom triangle, angle 3 is an exterior angle of the bottom triangle. And 35 and 36 are the remote interior angles. And the exterior angle theorem says that the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interiors. So the measure of angle 3 is really just 35 plus 36, which is 71 degrees. Find each measure. For number 5, find the measure of angle ABC. Well, in this figure, 145 degrees is an exterior angle, and 95 degrees and 2x degrees are the remote interior angles. And the exterior angle theorem says that the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. So 145, which is the exterior, is the sum of the remote interiors, 2x plus 95. Let's solve for x, and then we can find the measure of angle ABC. If we subtract 95 from each side, and then divide both sides by 2, x is 25. Now that's not our answer, though. Our answer needs to be the measure of angle ABC. And the measure of angle ABC is 2x, and if x is 25, substitute 25 in for x. So the measure of angle ABC is 50. The exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. So remember, the triangle angle sum theorem says that the three angles of a triangle add up to equal 180. So if you know two angles, it's very easy to find the third. And for the exterior angle theorem, the exterior angle is the sum of the remote interior angles. So use the rules to find the measures of the angles of a triangle.